Good evening, TLC family, and welcome to Insights into Wisdom. Tonight is going to be such an awesome conversation. I am so excited for what God has in store for us. I hope that you brought your notebook. I hope you are ready to tap in to the revelation that we are going to share this evening. But of course, before we go into anything, let's just take a moment and commit this time together in the hands of the Lord. Father God, we thank you. We glorify you. My God, you are an incredible God. You are an awesome God. Father, tonight we lift you up, oh God. We exalt you. We glorify your holy name. Have your way among us. Holy Ghost, flow in this place. My God, speak to us. Show us a great and mighty thing that we do not know. My God, give us a new revelation, a new understanding. Oh Lord, speak to us in a new way. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we glorify you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much once again for joining us. Let's go into a time of worship.
What an amazing time in worship. Thank you so much, TLM, for always blessing us well. Welcome, family. We're so excited to have you online this evening. I hope you are ready for this conversation. Tonight, we are talking about agreement in music. It is going to be on fire. It is going to be amazing. I am looking forward to the revelation that God has in store for us this evening. On behalf of our general overseers, Dr. Ralph and Pastor Jenna Darte, I want to thank you tonight for tuning in. We are so excited to have you. And I also want to let you know we have some awesome guests together with us this evening. We have our very own musicians from TLM. We've got Tim and we've got Eric together with us tonight and we are so blessed to have them with us. Welcome. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. We're, we're, we're so glad to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So you know what? I don't know very much about either one of you. So I'm really excited to be talking to you tonight. And, you know, we always see you in church. You're always busy playing. But, you know, I think the nature of playing, you know, playing music is that we don't get to talk to you. We don't get to know who you are. So tonight we are happy to have you on and get to know you a little bit better. So my first question is just going to be, tell us a little bit about yourself and sort of your journey in music. How did you get into it? Um, you know, how did you grow in it? Maybe Eric will start with you. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, um, it's such an honor to be here and thank you for the opportunity to um, be part of this show. I mean, we are in an amazing family and it's so it's such humbling to be part of this. What God is doing here is amazing. And my journey in music is quite an interesting one because um, at quite a young age, around two to three, um, I started, uh, I, I, I remember I'll turn some of the bowls and, and, and buckets in the house and I'll be hitting them, just making noise. And, and so my dad had to get me a drum, actually. So that's how it, 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 it all began. And I remember at um, um, a certain point in my life, my grandma bought me a red trumpet. And so as part of a team, I was the only one who was playing a red trumpet. And then as of now, I find myself playing the guitar. And so um, I, I've been privileged to at least touch on a little bit of the instrument and have some knowledge on it. And this is how far the Lord has brought me. And I'm, I have the opportunity to serve and to use my talents to great use, to bless the people of God. Amen. And we're so grateful for it. Red trumpet. That's so cool. Oh, my gosh. That is so cool. I didn't know you played the trumpet, too. Wow. You don't know about people, right? That's right. So we uncovered right. something new about yeah. you tonight. Yeah, exactly. Wow, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Do you still have your red trumpet? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, it's in awesome. Ghana. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Oh, we thank God for your, it's your grandma that bought it, right? Yes, please. Oh, yeah. we thank God. Thank God. Tim, what about you? Oh, well, my name is Tim. And yeah, thank you for having me to be a part of this. Um, yeah, something that I've been looking forward to. Um, yeah, and it's great to be able to serve, be a part of TLM, part of TLC. Um, my journey actually started, I think, maybe when I was around nine years old, 10 years old. Um, it was uh, when I was back in primary school. I, I just have, I just love music, and I was playing a recorder. It was, every, every one of us had to get a recorder. It's like, it's like you get all the books, and then you get a recorder to come to school. Without that, you get sent back home. So that's how I started learning the recorder. And from there on, funny enough, my mom got me a red little piano as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> so red trumpet, red piano, and <laughs> it's just like an octave and a half, and it's just very little. And so whatever I could play on the recorder, I would try to play it on the keyboard. And so and I started to teach myself how to play. Then I joined the choir in the church, and then I tried all the instruments. Actually, I played the bass, I played the drums for a little bit. But piano was just it for me. I was just like, yeah, I don't like all of you. I love piano. So I've just been, I've, I've just talked with the piano and I've been doing it for over 20 years now. And yeah, it's always great to be able to serve and use my gift to be a blessing to the people of God. So yeah, wow. so I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Thank God. Can, <laughs> can I ask you, what was it about the piano that you were like, nope, forget the other ones, this is it? I think it was, I mean, okay, there's a connection. And I feel like I could express myself more with the piano than when I sit on it. I just feel like there's so much to do. And I mean, like the bass guitar, you only pluck one note at a time, you know, maybe two or three anyway. 
but I just feel like there is so much room to move around, and I felt I feel more expressive in worship when I'm on the piano, and so it just kind of, and it's also something that I can take with me wherever I go. Uh, like I can play the piano, like keyboard, without needing to have an amplifier or something because they have their own little speaker. So yeah, there's just a connection, and I just felt like God really wanted me to uh, wanted me to use that instrument to be a blessing to a lot of people around the world, and yeah, so. Cool. You taught yourself? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, wow. I've not actually. I couldn't even afford to take lessons; they were too expensive. So, I just started teaching myself how to play, and me and God, and I watched some fun, some YouTube videos, and try to, you know, anytime I go to a concert, I will be looking over the shoulder of the people playing. What did What did you play there? And just yeah, that's how I learn. So. Amazing, and I love. Piano and the red trumpet. But unfortunately, I don't have mine anymore. Cause, yeah, oh, but, too bad. We think you could have brought them together and had a session. It got lost in transit <laughs> when I was living in Nigeria. I just yeah, I can't, I, I can't remember where it was. So. It did not make it to Canada. No, it did not. It did not. No. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing a little bit about yourself today. It's good to get to know you a little bit. You know, we're here in the month of agreement, and the, this month we have our anchor scripture for the month, theme scripture for the month, Matthew 18, 19, and it talks about agreement. And if you look at the root word, the original word in that scripture, it's symphano, which indicates harmony um, or symphony, right? And, and it, it makes me think of music. And I really wanted to talk to you all tonight because I wanted to learn a little bit more. And I'm sure viewers can also, you know, for our, those of us who do not play instruments or who are not particularly musically inclined, you know, we don't know how it all works. We don't know how it all comes together. And so I'm excited to learn a little bit more about those harmonies and coming into agreement in music. And I'm wondering, how do you think agreeing in sound brings the presence of God. Tim, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, I think it's very, very important. Um, music, by definition, one of the definition of music that I learned when I was very young was, I mean, actually from primary school, is um, a combination of different sounds. It could be vocal or it could be instruments that when you play them together or when you sing them together, they're pleasant to hearing. If it's not pleasant, then we call it noise. It's not music. The opposite of music is actually noise. <laughs> so, um, so there has to be some agreement in the music itself. Either you're singing it or you're playing it for it to actually be music, for it to be pleasant to your hearing. So when you look at that, as when you look at just that definition, and then even let's translate it to the keyboard that I play. Um, you, if you combine three notes together, you make a chord. I know that's a triad, but then if one note is out, it becomes a dissonance. It's no longer pleasing. So the notes have to agree for them to sound right. So I believe that once the music is right, let's say between the uh, worship leaders and the musicians, and, and we have, we're in agreement with our sounds that we're producing, then the next thing is for us to be in agreement with God, to be of one mind, of one spirit. And I think that's very, very uh, important when it comes to um, God's presence being amongst us. When, when we minister through the music, I think there's a scripture that I was looking at today, and I'm going to share that with you guys, is in the book of uh, Second Chronicles 5.13. And it was talking about when the people were, um, when they were one, you know, the singers and the trumpeters and the musicians are one, and then they sang. It doesn't mean that they were singing uh, they were saying the same thing, it just mean that they were unified in their mind, in their beliefs, in what they were going for. And then when you have that unity and everybody now do it collectively, then that was when the Bible said that the priest could not even stand to minister because the presence of God came down. So there's got to be that connection between, um, between agreement within the music ministry, like the vocals and the musicians being together, and then we being united in our pursuit of God. And, and when we not do that together, then the presence of God can come down. So I believe it's very important that we agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just to, just to add on, on to what you were saying, I think um, it, was, it was very important. I think what you were talking about, um, the sons of Asaph and Jeditun and yeah. Haman, 
So they were instrumentalists. They were playing the harp, the strings, and everything. And so, so the Bible says that the, when they sounded as one, there was a cloud that formed. And I think that that cloud does not just mean a normal day cloud that we see. That cloud actually signifies the presence of God. Right. So now they're playing as one. And I, th I think the Levites were the singers. They were singing. Yeah. And then all of them came together. And then at that moment, a cloud was formed. Now, they were, the, the, the Bible says that they were prophesying with these instruments. And I think that prophecy there does not mean thou sayest the Lord. No. That prophecy there actually means like creating an atmosphere mm -hmm. where you can actually welcome the presence. So you see, now that that atmosphere was created, when they played as, as one, a cloud was formed. You understand? And I can also give another example with, uh, um, uh, uh, with the apostles in the upper room. Yeah. You know, they said when, when, when they, were, they were in one accord, yeah. and then the Spirit filled the, the room. And even, I think, Paul and Silas. Yeah. At the point where they were, they were in the fire, and they started singing, the Bible says that God's presence was there now. The presence of God was there through an angel, right? Before they were, they, so, so, so that praise that they were given, it didn't free them from the fire. It just invited the presence of God through an angel at that moment in time. So I think that uh, we are green as, as instrumentalists and as singers, even when we take a normal day church service, the lifting up of hands, the clapping, the, sh the shouting, the, 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 the screams, the singing, the instruments all come together at that point in time where everyone is in that moment and we are in one accord and we agree, there's some form of harmony, right? And the presence of God will fill the room at that point in time. And then wherever the presence of God is, do you want to flee? And yeah. So I think it's very important. What you are saying is, is, is it just falls in line. There are a number of examples that, and it's very important that that harmony will invite the presence of God. Yeah. That's powerful. And I like how you, you kind of put, took, took it a step further, how the music being in harmony and being in one accord actually invites people into this sort of harmonic presence or this harmonic creation by maybe they start to clap their hands or even just spiritually align themselves with what's happening in that room or they start to sing or whatever it is. So it actually invites more harmony when you create the harmony in music which I find really, really interesting. And I'm wondering, you know, it's interesting to me, you were talking about the chords, like the fact that music to begin with, if it's not in harmony, it's not music. And so, you know, to be in one accord, and then you talked about chords and how, you know, you have to hit multiple notes on the keyboard to be able to play the chord. And I believe is similar also on a guitar. Um, so can you tell me about, because I always wonder how you all do this, but, I know sometimes as the spirit shifts and when you're in tune with the Holy Spirit and what he's doing in the room, you know, which is harmony again in a different kind of way. But as the spirit shifts and the songs change and you did not rehearse it in that way, how do you like catch up with that? How do you stay on top of that? What, what happens to do that? Either one of you can. I mean, uh, I, mean I think, well, there is always a leader I mean, when we're all playing together, there's a music director or whoever is calling, who's leading us. So even though there's somebody with a mic that is singing, but also musicians, we have somebody that's leading us. Um, if you remember when we were at King's Palace, we used to have a mic uh, that we talk through and then everybody can hear where we're going. So whoever has that mic is leading us somewhere. So when we get into those spontaneous moments when it was not rehearsed or we didn't really plan it, we're trying to follow who is leading us and we're, we're trusting that God is leading us through them. So it, they tell us where to go. And we just have to follow along to be in harmony, to be together. Because those moments, they're very powerful when we're united. The moment somebody's trying to do something different than everybody else, then that's it. We end it. You know? It's like we just kill the spirit right there. So, <laughs> so, so we always have a leader. And, and I think that's very important to maintain that unity and that harmony when we do play together because without that, it would just be chaos. It's like, you know, uh, me trying to be spontaneous and Eric is trying to be spontaneous at the same time. We can't have two drivers. Who's going to be driving us? And then we just follow. And I think that's how we're able to, to manage those moments. But also, um, it requires some level of 
um, skills as well to be able to do that. Because if you're a beginner, you may not be able to catch up with the pace of how fast things are changing. So you have to know what you're doing as well so that if I call, okay, we're going to flat five, you know what that means. You're not thinking, what, are, what is flat five? Do you get what I'm trying to say? So there is, there's some language that we do have that you listening to us, you will not understand what we're saying. But because Eric is a professional, he knows exactly what I meant when I said we're going to flat five. So yeah, I don't know if I'm going to add to that. <laughs> Sorry, <okay. laughs> he's, he's the leader, so I guess follow, I guess follow him. <laughs> You're falling into harmony. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Um, mm. And I think an important point to pull out that even in music, even in, you know, worship mm -hmm. and praise, there are leaders. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's a, a leader who's singing and there's also a leader yeah. among the musicians yeah. and not overstepping over each other. Yeah and allowing each other space. You know, you, you talk about it as if it's so easy, yeah. but you know, to those of us on the outside, like it's, it, it wouldn't be easy. Like you mentioned, yeah. if we stepped into that, we really wouldn't yeah. know yeah. what to do, yeah. you know, flat, whatever, like, okay. <laughs> and, and also it takes a lot of time um, to build that, uh, that rapport, that relationship, right? You know, um, the first time I met Eric, and now it's different, you know, like, cause, I've never heard him play before. He probably, you know, never heard me play before. It's very hard for him to really know. But now he probably can tell where I'm going to go next without even saying anything. Because sometimes if I'm leading, sometimes I'm even caught up in the moment that I don't have time to tell you I'm going to five. He knows I'm going to five because we've been together and he understands that connection is there. So, yeah. So uh, some spoken. They just felt. You, we feel it as a group, feel it as a musician, and we just know this is where we're supposed to be going. And then we rehearsed it. No, we didn't. <laughs> That's, this is powerful stuff, yeah. you know, because uh, last week we talked about agreement in marriage, yeah. right? And yeah. it's a similar thing where you get to know each other yeah. so that you don't, you don't have to guess anymore, right? Like you already know what to expect. You know how to behave. You know how to ask. You know which tone of voice to use and yeah. when. And this is just, I mean, it mirrors it so much. Yeah. And before that, we talked about agreement and prayer, right? And it, it, again, mirrors it so much because you've got to be in unity. You've got to be in one spirit. You've got to kind of be able to agree with people on a spiritual level. Yeah. And what you're saying really mirrors that. So, you know, Eric, on the flip side of that, how do you know where he's going? Explain that to me. Like, you feel it? Like, what? what? <laughs> okay, so... Um... <laughs> Everyone, everyone is kind of unique and gifted in their own way, right? So when I, when I joined um, Minister Tim, is one person I really respect, right? And the manner in which he plays or he does what he does, sometimes it, you just have to sit back and then watch him and observe him, right? Now, me speaking, pers personally speaking, I, I, okay, okay, so some songs are there, the root chords are there. You can just follow um, how, to, how to play it. The root chords are there. So you know that, okay, after, after this note, I'm going to hit this note next. But then Tim has this stylish way of playing. He knows how to link the chords, right? So after playing one chord, he's able to play a, a, a chord that once he steps on that chord, you know that, okay, the next chord is probably going to be this one, right? So playing to him continuously, you begin to grow and understand that, oh, okay, so this is a style of play. He knows how to link these chords, and it's just beautiful. So you have to admire it and accept it and then follow him as he says, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So he kind of almost leads you into it by yeah. linking them together to yeah. give you a little bit of a teaser so you know, yeah, okay, going. Next up is likely this one. So yeah. I'm with you. I'm following yeah, you. Exactly. That's powerful. Yeah. I love it. But we never talked about it. But yes. <laughs> right? We never had exactly. a good We never sat down and said, yeah, I'm going to do this and then you go there. No, <laughs> no we no, never no. do that. We That's just, amazing. We just play. Okay, so <laughs> how do you create that sort of atmosphere? Like within a, a, a team of musicians, mm -hmm. you know, and new people can be joining, right? Like there's times when new musicians will join in and maybe new people learning and, and they're ready to kind of join the main group. 
How do you create that atmosphere where people kind of flow together? They kind of know where each other is going. Um, they leave space for one another. Like you mentioned, you know, everybody's uniquely talented and yeah. gifted. And so mm -hmm. recognizing that and leaving space for each other's gifts, how is that atmosphere created? Um, no, I, I think, first of all, we all have to be of one mind, even before we get to the part of we're playing together. And we need to know why we're doing what we're doing. Because this is not a, it's not a concert. It's not a performance. So we are here to exalt Jesus. And that's it. So whatever we do needs to be targeted through, through, through that, uh, towards that. So even if it was a concert, we need to know exactly why we're here. And I think aligning everybody to that one goal, we can't have multiple goals. We have to have one, okay, this is why we do what we do. This is not a concert. If this was a concert, it's different. That everybody get, get a chance to do their solo and all that. But if it was a worship experience, we know we're not going to be doing solo here and there. You know, if in like Eric can just get on the guitar and just um, and just do like a run or whatever appropriately where it's necessary, but not really to put attention on himself. So these are kind of things that we 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 talk about. We we align ourselves with when we meet for rehearsals and when we do all these. These are the kind of things we're trying to get done is to make sure that we all know why we're doing this. So once we're of one mind, of one spirit it's easy to kind of follow a leader. It's follow so whoever is leading, either Eric or myself or PK, whoever is leading is easy to follow because we know that we're not here to outshine one another. Yeah, so we're trusting that God is leading the leader and we're going after that. And that's, what I'm, that's all that matters. So even if I have some crazy ideas in that moment and I'm not the one leading, I'm going to keep it because there is a leader that's leading us because that maintaining that unity is more important than me having a little moment to shine. Does that make sense? So, yeah. <coughs> this thing is that um, with music, you can, you can ask musicians, right? You, you can adapt. You can adapt. And there are different genres and there are different styles of play, right? And the fact that everyone is able to, so, so as a team, when new people come in, maybe this person may be very good at this particular genre. He's very good at uh, uh, worship. He's very good at fast tempo, praise, and all that. There is a way that we can adapt amongst ourselves through time. Yeah, of course, to take some time. But you, you can adapt. And like he said, you just follow what the leader is saying. We know that, okay, we are going to play it this way or that way or this way. And then we just create that mood where you can learn new things. Next time when we are doing the same thing, you know that, oh, okay, I did this during this moment. So then it just makes it so beautiful. And then we flow together. We create that atmosphere where we just, I mean, do what we do. To glorify God. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that, like keeping the focus on God. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's not about an individual shining. Yeah. It's about um, making sure that God is being glorified and then learning each other's styles, learning what to do in that moment, yeah. you know, feeling it out. And you mentioned it takes time, yeah. you know, so you might not get it your first week on the team, yeah. right? But as you listen, as you pay attention, as you trust and follow the leader, um, you start to grow and understand so that it, I guess it doesn't take you as long to follow the leader or to be able to keep up because you kind of start anticipating exactly. the shifts. Exactly. Super interesting. <laughs> I'm, lear I'm learning so, so much today. Um, all right. So, you know, there's obviously a big difference between secular music and what we're doing at church. And you've already been hitting on it throughout how, you know what, the purpose is not to take individual glory, but to glorify the Lord. So always pointing people back to God and following the direction of the Holy Spirit. And I'm wondering, how do you bring the Holy Spirit in effectively? How do you make sure that you're connected with the Spirit and flowing in the Spirit across the team? Oh. Are there any actions that you take or things that you do to, to create and develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit? Yeah, I mean, this, this, this question rem reminds me a lot about my mom. At a younger age, she will be telling me that, um, I, I, Eric, you are going to church. Have you prayed? Are you just taking the guitar to go and play for playing sake because you like playing? And I'll be like, oh, yeah, mom, I did it sometimes. So I'll be like, oh, I forgot. <laughs> but then she'll be like, 
It's very important, right? And I mean, I grew up to see the difference, right? So you see that if you are playing, and you are playing just by using your talent or your skills, at that point, you are just playing to entertain. It's not spirit-filled, right? But then if you are playing and you add your talent and the skill that you have, and it's spirit-filled, then you begin to minister. So you see that the day before, I've grown to maybe like listen to a lot of worship just to inspire myself, just to be in that mood, to create that room where I can lean and just listen, right? Then you pray in that atmosphere. You see that the next day, which is church, you'll be, you'll be fired up yourself. You feel that you, are, you have something to offer. You have something to give to the people. So then I've just learned that thing from here. And I thank you a lot for teaching me that. So you, you, you have to prayerfully be, be, be ready. So just as maybe um, a, a pastor will seek the face of God before coming to preach. I mean, it applies to us as ministers of the kingdom. You need to prepare yourself before you can minister to God's people. Because, I mean, you can't minister to God's people if you yourself you have not spoken to God in the first place. So I think that is very important, where you, 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 you need to seek the face of God and pray and prepare yourself fully. Maybe you can listen to a couple of worship songs. That's what I do personally. Just listen to the songs, just it sets that atmosphere, then I feel fired up for the next day. Yeah. yeah. No, and yeah, and, and I, th I, I think you said it. Um, there is personal devotion is very, very important um, to having a corporate manifestation of God's presence. So it's like this little this song that says, "This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine." So it's like we all come with our own little lights. You know, like you said, you've been at you, you've been with God on your own. You spend time with God. You're already fired up. What we're doing is we're just bringing all our lights together and explosion takes place. So once we neglect that personal devotion, then all we come to do is just entertainment, just showing off of skills. But then there is nothing going forth. There is no, the presence of God is not there. People will see and enjoy the music. And be like, oh, these guys are really good, but that's all you're going to get. But if you really want the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, then you got to know that it takes more than skills to do that. It takes the anointing. It takes the presence. But that doesn't come on the stage. That comes in the bedroom when nobody was there. And then when we come together, we pray together, we know that, okay, now we're ready because everybody is ready. We can't have one person not be ready because a, a, a link is as strong as its weakest link. So we can't have that weakest link. We need everybody to be strong because if you are doing something, if you're, if, if you're not ready, then you're going to be drawing us back because that's the, that's the power of unity. If we're not all going together and one person is left behind, that person is going to drag all of us backwards. So it's important for everybody to come prepared. And then when we now come together and we're all ready to go, then explosion is takes place. Yeah. So. so how do you think, you know, as a team and you're on the team and you notice maybe somebody seems like they're just off, like they're not, you know, like they, you just feel like yeah. ah, something's going on with this person because they're not really flowing with the rest of the team. And, you know, I think it's something that you kind of feel or notice. How do you then as musicians, especially, um, you know, if you've been around a while and you're a, bit, a little bit more mature, how do you make sure that the unity is maintained and bring people along in that? It comes, it comes down to this, so... Uh, sometimes you may you may observe that we may be playing as one people and then yeah something is a bit off right it may not be the case that maybe the the, the person is playing wrong notes or he's yeah. not gelling yeah. but there's just something about it that is off okay. now at that moment maybe maybe you have observed this that sometimes the the leader may be like okay uh, 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 let me let me hear the church. No no instruments. It's just all these are just techniques that we 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 train ourselves with, just to, in a form of reset. Let's reset the atmosphere, right? Okay. And then let's see how we can come again and attack this, right? Because we 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 have a goal. We have to create the atmosphere. We have to uh, uh, give people the opportunity to come to church to lay their bed in and then not leave back the same, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So then it, it gets to some point. Even sometimes it may be it may be very good. But then you need to you need to reset just to make the person reflect, 
right? And then we start again. So you'll be like, okay, let me hear the church. Let me hear the church. And then everyone comes down. It's a form of like a technique. I think, I think this is something that we do, we learn, because it happens a lot. Some people don't understand. They think that they are, they are just saying that, okay, the instrumentalists are not playing well, but all these are just um, techniques yeah. that the leaders follow. It's a form of um, reset. I think that's one way that we can go about it. And then it also gives us some time to think of what, how, how we need to approach the next session, if I should say. Because we are, we, are, we are going to take it again. We are going to um, come at it again and try and get that link, that unity, that bond to work. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good technique that I've, I've come to learn personally. Amazing. Yeah. No, and, and, and I think it's right. Because um, even sometimes, uh, sometimes the leader, maybe they felt like this is the wrong song. You know, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it just, maybe it doesn't work for the, for the moment that we're in and you want to just go a different direction. So you use one of those techniques to just kind of cut the music. Let's, yeah, let's reset this whole thing. And, but if there's somebody particularly that you feel like they're struggling, um, they're not really together with us, I would normally just have a conversation with them. Maybe there's something else going on in their personal life um, outside of church. Um, that, but sometimes we all go through stuff and it comes through when you're ministering. So like, like you said earlier, you can't give what you don't have. So if you're really not at peace in your heart, you can't give peace to people. So for me, I'd rather, I'll just approach the person, is it, what's up? Is there something we can pray about, we can talk about it? And to just know that it could be more than just them not being with you, it could just be something that's going on. And so recognizing that we're not always gonna be 100% every time, but making allowances for those moments, when you know that, okay, and which is why a leader might just sense that something is not right. Okay, let's go to something that's not too technical. Let's just sing a chorus. Like one of those old classic that, you know, even without musicians, you're good. The church will just take it on by themselves, right? So these are things that you just pick up in the spirit. But then you don't address that in that moment. We address it afterwards. Well, what was up today? You're not really together. Is there something you want to talk about, pray about? And, and just, just make sure that we, we keep moving forward together and not leaving somebody behind. So, yeah. Okay. yeah. Such an incredible ministry. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. Every time I talk to different ministries, it's like most of the principles are the same, yeah. right? And it's just a different part of the body co coming yeah. together. And I feel like, like music is also like that. And it's such an, an instrumental part yeah. of, of, of church, of the experience of bringing the presence. Mm. And, you know, it's interesting when we were at the... Um, the convention center, the Ottawa Convention yeah. Center in the East a little yeah. bit, there was a, like a yoga class or something like that mm. that was happening sort of around the corner in another room mm. um, of the conference center. And as they were kind of going back and forth, they were kind of walking really slowly and it was during praise and worship. And they were so drawn to, to that, you know, when they kept stopping and, and I would invite them in, you know, and they'd be like, oh, I'm not dressed. I'm not dressed for church, right? But it's interesting how that music, there was like, yes, it was beautiful music. It sounded beautiful. It was really, really nice. But it was more than that. You know, like it was something that was drawing them in. And so to me and everything that you're saying today, music is like this underlying foundation. I think there's a reason why we have it at the beginning of the service. Um, and it's not about one person's talent. You know, and I'm just wondering also how you work together with um, those who are singing. Because to me, like you've talked a lot about communicating with each other, but those people singing, like if they switch the song, I mean, the leader can maybe yeah. see and I know they've got some hand signals and yeah, things yeah, like that. Yeah. But how do you also make sure that that's all connected in so that you can build that foundation for the service and create that atmosphere and anointing and presence? Because when that's there, the ability to flow through the whole service, it's like it carries you through, you know? And if it wasn't there when we got there, especially, you know, we're moving around now, yeah. it can it create does, it, yeah. it can bring it. Yeah. So I'm wondering how you also bring in the unity with the broader service yeah. and music, um, singers. And I mean, I'm not, I guess that's why we practice um, every Saturday, right? Um, it's not just to come and sing, also to pray together. As, as a bigger group, and then we walk through the service. Um, what song comes after what songs, and we rehearse them. And 
in case something somebody decides to go somewhere else. I mean, we can't help it. We just got to go with them. I mean, um, that's why, I mean, and I think people on the musicians at, here, at TLC, they're very skilled. I mean, to the glory of God anyways. And we just kind of know where to go. Even when dad comes up sometimes and just takes us to somewhere, and we just have to follow, right? But, but, the, the, but practice is very important. Meeting together before the service is very crucial. Because without that, we're just going to be going different directions. And it's very important that we are in harmony with the singers. We can't be doing our own thing. And really, we're there for them. They're not there for us. We are accompanying them. So even I might be leading the musicians, but guess what? The worship leader is leading me. So there's got to be that connection. And we got to stay, uh, we got to stay in the same spirit with each other to know that, you know what? I'm here for you. So wherever you're leading us, I'm going to be leading these guys to come along with you. So... So, so we kind of give, we give that hierarchy. Like the worship leader is like the, Holy Spirit is the big leader. And then the worship leader is like the second boss. And then maybe the MD is like the third boss. So there is that order. Because we're, like I said, we're following them because they're leading the church primarily. We're just trying to amplify whatever they're doing and accompany them to be successful at what they're trying to do. So but meeting prior to service, practicing together is very important to be able to deliver every Sunday or every Wednesday or whatever we meet. So, yeah. I think, I think um, um, for, the, for the TLM and the in instrumentalists in church, I think they have this, this ability, right? They are very sensitive. They are very sensitive to the spirit, right? So um, and Minister Tim and Bishop Sam and all the big people. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the they, are, they are very sensitive and I mean, they are discerning, right? So in terms of following the lead singer, I mean, there is a way you need to play to command that atmosphere, right? And that only comes by you being discerning and being sensitive to the spirit. What should I do at this point? Do I need to calm down? Do I need to hold this chord? Do I need to take my time? Do I need to set, a, 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 do I need to be more tense or be more um, aggressive, yeah. right? And that comes by being sensitive to the spirit. I, I remember there was some story that, that there was a, a musical concert and then the, the keyboardist was playing and then the pastor had to tell the keyboardist that hey you need to be spiritual be spiritual <laughs> and the congregation was laughing i mean they were laughing maybe it was funny but he was actually serious and if you understood what he was trying to say he's trying to say flow with me mm -hmm. you need to connect with me because yeah. i'm going somewhere you mm -hmm. can't just play because you are giving you background like music <laughs> exactly you need to flow with me you need to connect with me and Minister Tim and the, the big people, we, we are still <laughs> learning. And, and so, so I think it comes with that, with that ability. And it, it all comes down to you being prepared and have something in, in the spirit and flow with what the lead singer is, how he's, sometimes you can just watch the mannerisms and how the pastor is preaching. And it's just being connected to the spirit and being discerning yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and I think you're right. It has a lot to do with that discernment because most of the time when... Even after we've practiced, you, you still got to be discerning because the Spirit of God can move however it wants to move. And you don't want to be the one restricting the move of the Spirit. And also it depends. Sometimes it's also depending on the, who is leading at that time. If, let's say, uh, Pastor Makita is leading versus Pastor Caroline. You no, know, I mean, there's, some, there's, there's a way I would play if Pastor Makita is leading versus when Pastor Caroline is leading. Because they're two different people. And they flow differently. So, yeah, it's being discerning and being sensitive. Like I said, being, being spiritual in that moment, saying it's not so much about playing right now. It's we're trying to go somewhere. And we all need to, it's, it's like telling everybody, hey, we're going to this place, but we don't have a map. And we all expect to get there. So it's pretty much now trying to internalize how do we get there, but without speaking, without saying anything to each other. These are all internal discussions. Mm -hmm. Eric is leading, but I'm not talking to him. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to pick what he's doing yeah. in the spirit. I'm trying to pick what Dr. Raff is doing or what Pastor Makita is doing and just flow with that. So these are, these are things that happens when we're, there, when we're not vocal about it. But it takes time, though. Well, I won't lie to you to build that rapport a bit more. Because even you know, with discernment, you get better at it. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I got that wrong. No, nah, that was wrong. And then you feel like, okay, 
and you do better next time. So practice, practice, practice. Totally. I think, I think you know, that goes for any connection with the Holy Spirit is yeah. you might misunderstand yeah. Yeah. sometimes, you know, but the more you connect with them, it's, yeah. it's like, you, you've been talking about building rapport among the team. Well, the Holy mm. Spirit also, you need to bring, build that rapport yeah. with mm. the Holy Spirit, right? So making space for him, leaving a little bit of flexibility, being willing to be flexible enough that, you know, yes, this was the program. This was yeah. the order of songs. But yeah. now we've gone way over here yeah. because the Holy Spirit is leading us there, mm -hmm. you know. And, and I also like how you mentioned um, the discernment piece and then supporting each other which is really the essence of a team, yeah. right? So you're supporting each other, you're supporting the singers, you su they're, su like they're, they're relying on you, they're depending on you. Yeah. And then, you know, you're all being led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's such an incredible mm -hmm. picture of harmony. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's just so interesting. I'm learning so much tonight, you know, from the musical perspective. Yeah. And I think it really embodies yeah. the scripture. Like now I understand why yeah. um, that agreement is actually like symphonal, yeah. right? Like yeah. bringing the harmony because that's how God wants us as people to behave. Yes. And it's exemplified through the harmony in music. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's true. So Absolutely. Cool. Amazing. Well, I want to thank you both tonight mm. for joining in this conversation. It's been a wonderful conversation. Mm. Like I said, I've learned so much. I hope you've also learned a ton. <laughs> um, I hope you took notes. I hope you brought your notebook. <laughs> but I really love if we could also mm. take some time and exemplify that harmony and just spend a little bit of time with God in music so that y'all can, you know, tap into that flow Absolutely. together tonight. Absolutely. We'd love to Amazing. do that. Yeah. Awesome. All right.
Wow, what amazing harmony and music this evening. Were you blessed? I was so, so, so blessed. God richly, richly blessed the two ministers who just poured into us tonight. It's been absolutely amazing. Minister Eric, Minister Tim, God richly, richly bless you, reward you. May he expand you in every way. May he bring you a new anointing, a new level of ministering for him in music and in sound in the name of Jesus. And thank you too so much for tuning in tonight. It has been amazing to be here together with you. And just as we have tapped into what the Lord has for us tonight, it is time for us to sow into the kingdom of God. So search your heart, whatever the Lord is speaking to you to give tonight, the giving screen will be in front of you. You can go ahead and scan that QR code um, and give whatever you are desiring to give this evening. Let's just take a moment and pray over our offering. Almighty God, once again, we thank you. We glorify you. My God, you are such an incredible God. You are such an amazing God. Father, we thank you for the spirit of agreement. We thank you for teaching us on agreement, O Lord. Let your Holy Spirit move in us and among us, O God, as your people give tonight. May agreement be their portion in the name of Jesus. May your Holy Spirit bring agreement in their homes, bring agreement in their churches, bring agreement in their ministries, at their workplaces, in their lives. Lives. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we glorify you. Amen. Amen. Don't forget, we've got our midnight prayer ongoing every night this week, Monday to Friday, midnight on Zoom. You do not want to miss it. It is always powerful. It is always on time. As well, we've got CR on Thursday night at 6.30 p.m. You can stream it at Campus Rush on YouTube, or you can come right here to see our house and be here live in person. As well, we've got our Friday prayer. 8 o'clock p.m. right here at Sierra House. We want to see you there as we seek the face of the Lord together. Saturday, 3.30 p.m., we've got the Bridge Youth meeting right here as well. Or you can also tune in online on YouTube at Bridge Youth. As well, of course, we've got our Sunday celebration service, 10 a.m. at Infinity Convention Center. It is always on time. It is always awesome. Make sure you join us as we celebrate the presence of the Lord together. And you know what? If you're in the Ottawa area, we want to see you in person. So again, Infinity Convention Center, bring your children. The Royal Treasures Ministry is open. We want to see them too. And if you're not in the Ottawa area, no problem. You can tune in on YouTube, live stream at Transforming Life Center, or you can also tune in on Facebook Live, whichever one is most convenient for you. And then, of course, Sunday night. We've got the Global Leadership Summit on Zoom. Make sure, make sure you join us as we get insights, wisdom, new revelation for leadership to help us be sharpened as leaders. Well, family, it has been so nice to see you together tonight. We're so happy you were able to join us online. Let's just close in prayer. Almighty God, we thank you and we glorify you. My God, you are such an incredible God, such an on-time God. We thank you so much for tonight's revelation, oh God. May you... Cause your people, my Lord, to operate in a new level of harmony. May you bring harmony. May you bring symphony to every area of their lives. May you bring beauty and joy, O oh Lord. May you teach them and instruct them in the ways of unity in the name of Jesus. Cause your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, to speak to them, to bring unity, to bring agreement in every area of their lives in the name of Jesus. My God, as your people go, may you continue to pour your presence out upon them, continue to speak to them, Cause them to dream dreams, O oh Lord. Show them great and mighty things that they do not know. In the name of Jesus, we thank you and we glorify you. Amen. Well, God richly bless you. Have a wonderful evening transforming lives and raising leaders because you matter. Mm -hmm.